Divine True Spirit Discussions Discussions with people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. Jesus and Mary present Sonia as spokesperson for Celestial Spirit Group, giving advice to viewers and listeners. The session was recorded on the 14th of January 2016 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. G'day everyone, how are you today? Myself and Mary are here today doing some channeling, but we're mostly doing it because we've got to test some of our equipment ready for the assistance groups. So we're doing a series of tests today. So hopefully everything will work still and we'll still get a decent recording out of it. But, uh, but today what we're going to do is do a bit of channeling together and different groups of, of people. And, and one of those groups of people is a group of celestial spirits who want to talk to you particularly those people who are coming along to our assistance group so so that's what we'd like to do but maybe we can now talk about a bit of background about yeah. about them and, yeah. and so forth so um these spirits approached me when we decided we we're going to do some mediumship today and mm. they said it was really our guides came to me and said that they were that they wanted to have the opportunity to address everyone who's coming to the groups uh before the groups and um so there's a lady, Sonia, who has been um, nominated to be their spokesperson. So it's a, it's a group of celestial spirits and, and she's feeling really excited because it's like a, a chance for her. She feels really honoured to have this, this role. She's never done this before and she feels really, um, yeah, excited to be able to be the spokesperson to, um, to send a special message. Mm. on behalf of all of our celestial friends to our other friends here on earth mm -hmm. so, yeah mm -hmm. that's good yeah so what we'll do is just uh, hear from sonia maybe yeah, sonia can just... give us a little bit of background about her life on earth um <laughs> before she begins her message if that's okay with her <laughs> we'll see how, what she'd like to do <laughs> Oh, I should just say I'm feeling quite emotional. It's not Sonia who's who's uh, <laughs> teary. <laughs> teary. <laughs> um, I j I can feel how loving they are, and that just brings yeah. up some feelings for me. So, yeah. yeah. Um, hello, Jesus. Hello, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for this opportunity. Mm. <laughs> You've never done it before, or you would have done it to some groups of spirits, I suppose, would have thought some people on earth perhaps, but not in this regard, in this way. No, mm. nothing like this before mm. and nothing. It's, it's a real step for me and I'm just so <laughs> happy to have this opportunity. Mm. And um, I feel very honoured that this is, this is such a, a, a wonderful duty to start my, um, to grow my experiences and also to, to share such a special message on behalf of so many dear brothers and sisters here in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's so, so wonderful to have the chance um, to have you as a part of this uh, discussion as well. I feel really pleased. Mm. I, we didn't know whether Mary should just speak it straight into the camera or not. <laughs> well, I feel really glad that you're that you're here as well. I know Mary has different ideas about why she wants you to hear, but <laughs> yeah. for me, it's quite quite an honour to have such um, an open and direct co communication with you. Um, we have the opportunity to communicate with you in in lots of other ways, but mm. Um, mm. certainly this. Um, this way of communicating with you is, is just very special, as, as I know all of us say that to you. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, thanks. I'm really pleased to share something about of my life, but really I feel that my duty here is to, to share the message that all of us firstly would like to um, give to those people who are coming to your groups. Yeah, I thought maybe first, though, the sharing something of your life just may help the people who are listening to, you know, connect connect with you a little in terms of what your background is and so forth. 
and I know there's a tendency on earth to judge the background then and not listen to the message. But Well, um, of course, I'm happy to do this. Mm. But as you know, the next group who will be coming, um, they have quite a lot in common with those people who will be coming to the groups. And yes, yes. They wish to share a lot about their experiences right. um, in order to assist those people no coming. So let's proceed with the message. <laughs> My background on earth <laughs> is... Is not that similar, to be honest. Yes. I so I. Well, could you just tell me when you were on Earth? Sure, mm. sure. I actually passed from the Earth since you have returned to the Earth, mm -hmm. and so um, it was in the uh, early seventies that I passed. Mm -hmm. I was an older woman at that time, and so I lived on Earth from. From about the turn of the century until mm. that time, mm. um, I had a full life that I must say was not troubled as much as many have, as much as many of my friends here experienced mm. their life on Earth, and I always did have some faith in my heart in God, mm. which I'm very very grateful for, and mm. that has sped my progression in the spirit world uh, immensely. Mm. Um, and this is why I'm hesitant to share too much more because I, I feel that, and this is perhaps something that we will speak about later in my message, that many in your group have a lot of um, almost feelings of resentment towards someone such as myself yes. who experienced such a, um, a privilege of not being as blocked to God from her early childhood as many others. Mm. Uh, now are experiencing mm. and um, it is an issue for them of course however that they harbor this resentment mm. because it it shows the the lack of development in love the the brotherly love the sisterly love that um, that is required if if we are going to become loving beings yes yeah, so, so the competitive jealousy that tends yes. to appear yes. on earth quite frequently is yes. is obviously something that stops a lot of people here on Earth progressing very rapidly. Yes, yeah. but partly this is why I'm partly so very excited is mm. that my progression in the spirit world has been rapid um, for someone and I'm not, I'm, this is why it is such an honour, I'm not long have I entered the celestial, celestial spheres. spheres. And um, so I feel that the, the abundance of gifts that are being showered upon me <laughs> is still so overwhelming. But to have mm. the opportunity to speak to you now in this way mm. when um, yes, <laughs> since in this, in this way, uh, you have been in your return state since I entered the spirit world. Mm. And as you know, this is a different thing. And mm. again, for another discussion to discuss mm. this. Of course. <laughs> yes, <laughs> about yourself and all of the, the, uh, the ways that you are existing <laughs> at mm. present. But mm. uh, let's, let's move on to the message. Yes, uh, yes let's do that. Mm. So many of us here take such a strong interest in as you know in yourselves, but in everyone who attends your talks and who hears, uh, who listens to you, who watches you on YouTube, who we guide so many in their Google clicking <laughs> 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 to find you both. Mm. Um, and we have great compassion for the fact that many times it is the smallest injury that causes a person to continue clicking on and, and not pay more attention to to what you are sh what you are sharing mm. it is of so much importance as you know <laughs> what you share and the humility with which you both do that is has more power than most people wish to acknowledge mm. or can even recognize mm. However, there are those who do stay longer than a single click. <laughs> and it, I'm making jokes now about the internet because it is such a such an incredible invention. <laughs> it is a strange tool as well. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange and riddled with uh, with reflections of the uh, the human condition, yes. uh, the this collective soul condition upon the earth at this time. Mm. Um, but there are those who, who are listening and who stay and who 
use their ears but perhaps not their hearts to hear what you are both sharing. Mm. And it is those, some of those people who will be attending your groups. And we have been privy to all of your planning for these groups, all that you have been, um, all that you have been preparing on so many levels for mm. these, for these honoured guests to come. We know, and we will share a little now of what we have observed just for the benefit of those people listening. Mm. We have watched you both be very diligent in feeling about what you feel is the most beautiful and crucial beneficial lessons that each person needs to grasp, is required to grasp in their heart before they can begin to take these very important um, steps towards God. Mm. So we've watched you both in the planning phases for these groups and even that came as a precursor to you planning the actual groups and their dates was the feelings that you both had about how it would be best to serve humanity at this time mm. to assist people to begin to take steps towards their father again. Mm. And then we have observed as those plans began to take shape and you began to think about the best way to offer those lessons that would allow people as much time to absorb them what was the right sequence to present um, the various lessons and principles in, the, the length of time, the amount of people that it would be beneficial to have in singular groups. And then we watched as you very generously decided that each group should be run at least twice so that as many people as possible could benefit. Mm those people who are willing. And then we have watched you plan in minute detail, especially yourself, brother, exactly what technical requirements there are, exactly um, all of the logistical issues mm. of presenting and making sure that there is a good and accurate record of everything that will go on mm. so that each of the lessons, each moment that you share with people while in attendance will be of a maximum benefit to many people for many years to come. Mm. Because we are excited to share with those people who are listening to our message today that things are going to change. Things are going to change in the way that Jesus and Mary are sharing their time mm. and in the capacity that they have to give personal time to other people. Yes, it's an opportunity now for people that they don't often realise. And this mm. is this is one of the core um, elements of our message that we wish to share mm. today is that many are are not receiving the gifts, the many gifts that are on offer, and they are not valuing them as gifts, or seeing that there is a time limit upon these gifts, not because there will be less love in the future, but because there will be more, mm. and because there being more within your souls that and particularly within this one soul, mm. um, that the gifts that you will be giving will be broader and greater. And so therefore, and they will have the capacity to reach far more people, but this will mean that the specific individual one-on-one -on -one time will be limited mm. and scarce, in fact. Mm. Um, so we've watched as you have, in fact, been planning very carefully so that what you do now will benefit many people for many years to come and mm. that these basic lessons will um, be gifts to people, not just those who are attending, but it is designed in such a way that any new person can commence and begin to really take these first very important steps towards God. Mm. Yeah. So we have watched you do all of this <laughs> and we have watched you uh, labour in front of computers and in this beautiful studio mm. that you the all were part I don't like very much, in. But, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know. <laughs> yeah. And perhaps this is why we wish to mention it, because we know that mm. um, <laughs> much of what you do is unnoticed and unrecognised. Mm. And, and much of what you do, you do purely for um, the good of others mm. and not because you find a great deal of... Uh, enjoyment in no. these more technical <laughs> aspects. <laughs> yeah. But now we see that you are you are nearing readiness technically mm. and and we know that you have pr prepared a lot of the framework for everything that will will unfold 
at the first groups. Mm -hmm. And this is why we felt it a wonderful time to come and speak to those people specifically, not to yourselves, but to those who will come to the groups. Mm -hmm. We shared with you uh, a few weeks ago some of the, the common issues that we see for those who will be in attendance. Mm -hmm. And perhaps now is the time that we can begin to address each person who will be coming directly. Mm. So the very first thing that we wish to share, we have already mentioned, and I, Sonia, have already mentioned on behalf of all of us here, and that is that many of you do not see the quantity and the value of the gifts, the lessons, the teaching that has already been shared with you. Many of you feel complacent. You feel that God's love and God's truth is a gift that doesn't rate highly in your list of priorities for life. Mm. You do not feel a hunger or a deep longing to embrace these principles that would enable you to have your first connection with God. And for those of you who believe that you do, very often you are caught up in addictive desires that you are calling longings for God. So you are, or you are addictively pressuring yourself, playing out injuries from your childhood, where you are punishing yourself for and trying desperately to earn God's love rather than simply softening and growing your humility. So these things are very much putting you on a path where you are going away from God rather than towards. And we know that our brother and sister have tailored a lot of lessons in order to, and a lot of teaching in your first group to assist you to understand these very basic ways that you are going wrong <laughs> and but what we wish to say is that all of that will be wasted if you attend with this same spirit of complacency in your heart. It is impossible to receive a gift if you already feel that you are deserving of it. You cannot, you cannot really receive into your heart or value that gift and use it in the way that it was intended if you feel unappreciative or deserving of it. And this is the state that many of you are in. So this is our first very important um, message or part of our message that we wish to, to raise with you. So Sonia, can I ask a few questions before you proceed with the next part? Um, so basically what you're saying is that the, the, the apathy and complacency that exist is because of the generally many of the people who listen not appreciating the value of truth in their long-term future life, including their life on earth, really. Yes. And yes, that is the case. And with regard to the gift side of things, many people probably wouldn't get that, what you've just said, in the sense that if you expect the gift or if you think you deserve the gift then it means you're not actually receiving a gift anymore gifts are something that usually is unexpected and feels like it's undeserved or <laughs> not so much undeserved but but it's a, so generally a surprise or a <laughs> well it is it's a question of the value yes of of how a person values what is given yes and at and so so when you say they expect it or they think they deserve it, perhaps if you can um, explain that a little further so that people can understand the relationship between that preventing them from receiving the gift. Certainly. when it, And perhaps we can be clearer, mm -hmm. I can be clearer. There is a feeling that is very widespread, a, a, an injury within <coughs> people upon the earth at this time, and that is that they will be spoon-fed. Mm. They will be spoon-fed information. They will be 
uh, help to make every next forward movement. There is an instruction manual and a how-to video and, and <laughs> there is, sadly, there is a growing feeling that no one has to exert much will in order to get anything. anything. Mm. And this is what I was referring to when people feel a sense of entitlement to to receive a hand holding or a spoon feeding mm -hmm. uh, in their progression. Mm. A lot of them would call it nurturing, but it's not <laughs> real nurturing. <laughs> no, and that's why I cannot use that word. Exactly. <laughs> True nurturing is something very different. Mm. But the feeling that many have, while some of them may be protesting now and saying, but divine truth was the greatest gift that I ever came upon and it was so unexpected, but at the same time an answer to a prayer. I hear all of you saying that. But if each of you is to explore the feeling within your heart, the attitude that you have right now to the receipt of the teaching, mm. To the, to the living and embracing and the putting into practice these teachings, the majority feel that they just need one more video before they can get it, mm. that they just need one personal conversation or one phone call or one email or one thing before they are willing to take that first step to really apply a principle, mm -hmm. to really, and this is about the embracing or the harnessing of the individual's will mm. towards God. And this is why I keep saying the first step. Yes, so they're, they're acting like little newborn babies in, in many ways who, who need to be spoon fed and don't have much of a will of their own. <laughs> <laughs> and the great distinction there is that the newborn baby is not even cognitively aware of themselves. Exactly. And we cannot say that for for the people for the adults upon the earth. No, they have a responsibility for the decision they're making. And they are they are aware of themselves as human beings with choices because they exercise choices all of the time. Hmm. They may not see themselves as a soul with a will, but they do know themselves to be a human being with choices. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so when I was referring to the issue of a gift mm. and a gift not being received, uh, I was really making the, the, the comment that many people feel that what has been given has not been enough. Yes. They not enough for them to make a, make a new choice. For them to make a change. Mm to make for them to make us take a personal step in order to grow their faith mm. many feel that they that they need and this is the demand the expectation mm. they feel they are entitled to more and more and more and the crux of what i wanted to say in the in this first past part of our message is that unless each of you who attend the groups begin to recognize this level of complacency, this level of squandering of the gifts already received, feeling dissatisfied that they're not enough, unless this is recognized within each of you and you begin to see, to ask, to understand and to receive God's truth, which is that there is already a wealth and an abundance hmm. of information but the, the missing thing that has not been enough has been the lack of will to challenge and in, in challenge oneself and to embrace mm. change. Then each of you will attend whichever group or watch whichever group you do on video. And, you, and if you have this same attitude, it will still be not enough. Mm. When if you remember in my introduction, I spoke at length about how much preparation has been put into each individual group to make sure that it is tailored to give people specific examples and lessons and, and really inspiration in order to begin to embrace their will to act. Mm. And so there is no question from our perspective of it not being enough or being inadequate. In fact, it is being presented in a way that it, it is perfect for the place where each person who will attend is at. Mm. 
Mm. But if unless they begin to recognize the gift, the value of the gift that is an offer, and the the understanding that their will must be engaged in order for them to fully reap the benefits of this gift, and this is what I meant by to receive the gift, mm. then no change will occur and more years will go past and they will s- s- continue to harbour the feeling that they just need one more little thing and then it'll be okay to change. Yeah. And I think the contrast there, isn't it, is that many in the spirit world, as you know, have not received anywhere near the amount of assistance um, to, uh, you know, and, and similar kinds of gifts in terms of the teachings, and yet <laughs> they've progressed more rapidly. Yes. And that's not because they live in the spirit world. It's because of their, their, the actualization of their passion and desire to do so. It is the condition in their heart. Mm. And this is what I wish to speak to in this first point, is that each of you must come to feel the, the true condition of your heart, the desire for change, the, desire, the, the willingness to change. Or the lack of it even. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Be uh, honest about that. At least. To be honest <laughs> about the true state of of your heart at mm. this present moment. Mm. Because unless one becomes aware of it, it as it is right now, it will never change. Yes. And as you mentioned, so many of us have progressed in the spirit world with far less instruction. Mm. But that was because the, the conditions within our heart were different. Yes. There was a feeling of of honour of what was given. There mm. was a, a desire to truly listen and grasp and to take responsibility for for testing and experimenting mm. with with what was shared with us. Mm. And there was also a willingness to respect the love that was demonstrated towards us even if we could not yet feel it, mm. to examine the treatment we were receiving and to respect the love that went into what, we, what was being given and the way th- that things were shared with us, that meant that we were, we did not want to waste that, we did not want to dishonour it, mm. and so we took steps on our own. And here on Earth it's a... Uh I suppose one of the good things about Earth is that you can spend a lot of time with a person who can share a lot of truth with you. Or, um, whereas in the spirit world, that's not always a clear opportunity that ha- has to be driven by your passionate desire. You can't just do it uh, through some kind of rela- in some kind of relaxed, apathetic, uh, yeah. laissez-faire type <laughs> uh, method uh, as many people on Earth here do. Yes, mm. and, and this is one of the great beauties of the experiment that you are involved in at the moment, quite personally, is mm. that there is this opportunity in front of everyone on earth that they may, from whatever condition they are in, begin to hear truth, mm. begin to have it work upon their heart. Mm. And while we understand the difficulty, the injuries that come from this earthly existence, the incarnation here and the effect that that has upon a person's will, what concerns us is this feeling, these feelings that I keep mentioning about complacency and entitlement and a lack of care of much very in general, mm. uh, except for one's own pleasure or Even then comfort. it's really addiction, isn't it? Yes. For one's own addictions to be met. It, it is not a pure, pure pleasure no. that people are seeking. And, and sadly, in many who have, are attending your groups, there has grown a, a um, situation where many are... Um, They have identified some of those more overt (laughs) pleasure-seeking addictions and really not from a place of um, sincerely desiring healing of the the injuries that drive those those passions and longings so out of harmony with love, 
but they have suppressed them and ceased them in their life. But now they live in a kind of l l sort of stagnation. Well, it's an ap apathetic lethargy, isn't it? <laughs> yes, where, which is really a passive-aggressive rage. Yes. They feel that what they used to do to get happy, what they call happy... Has, has been taken away. Has been taken away. <laughs> and so now really what we see is they move from one activity to another, really still seeking comfort mm. and a watered-down version of their pleasure, mm. but in a way that does not challenge their facade, the things that they tell themselves, which is that they're really trying to And they've already to given up love. those things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They tell themselves that they've given up most of their addictions. When, when that's not the case. <laughs> in reality, there's been a large substitution yeah. of addiction for ones that they feel are more acceptable and more loving. Mm. <laughs> and as you know, this is not progress. No. This is sideways movement. Yes. <laughs> So we know that you will seek to challenge many of these things in yes. those people who are in attendance. And so we look forward to that <laughs> because we know that it will be so beneficial for so many. Yes, but we feel only... there's little point in allowing the, the leth lethargy to continue and, uh, and we feel there's little point in us sharing more information when most people that we have heard us still haven't really heard the information we've already shared. <laughs> <laughs> and that is right. And this, we, this is not a telling off. No. This is really us attempting to assist people to feel the situation as it is within their heart right now mm. with regards to God and love and truth to really connect to that and to be real about that because mm. unless that happens more of the same will will occur in the life in their life ahead yes there is no other way that change can occur unless there is this first as you love to say this awakening to the sin mm. so this was mm. the first point that we wish yeah, to say it's a good good point mm. the second point relates to Issues surrounding a feeling of a lack of faith mm. and a feeling of hopelessness. Now, many of those who, you, who will be attending are confusing <laughs> feelings of lack of faith and hopelessness, the true feelings of, lack of, of a lack of faith and hopelessness, and some of them do have a genuine uh, lack of faith within their heart in God and God's love. Mm. But what we see occurring is a really a compensatory set of emotions that many, many of you who will be attending are calling hopelessness or a lack of faith. But really this is, or a, f a feeling of desolate faithlessness, if mm. we could say that. Mm. And you're sort of labelling this as a condition or, or a set of emotions within your soul. But really what we see occurring is in relation to this dynamic that I mentioned previously about attempting to intellectually move towards God, breaking down, shutting down uh, issues that... Uh, each of you personally feels ashamed of, ashamed to acknowledge within yourself, shutting those emotions down and stopping a lot of addictions, physical addictions, without dealing with any of the emotional condition that drives those conditions. Mm. What begins to arise is some difficult feelings. They, they don't feel very good. And in fact, it is a sense of hopelessness that is real mm. <laughs> because while you remain in this state, your future in terms of growth in happiness and love, true happiness and growth in love in your soul, growth towards God, it is hopeless. It is hopeless if you continue in a life of denial. You, will, you don't have any hope of growing in love. If you continue to, to restrict and restrain yourself away from addictions but never ever want to deal with the emotions that are driving those addictions, it does feel terrible. Mm. It feels that life lacks any pleasure or substance. 
And many of you, we watch becoming more and more restricted in certain areas because you, you're trying, trying, trying without feeling, 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 <laughs> or, or you're getting, you are punishing yourself in ways that to try and attempt to modify your behavior and your soul through being harsh upon yourself. And all of this ends up feeling very yucky and desolate. And cyclic as well. And cyclical. Mm. And after you're involved in this cycle for a long time, of course, you begin to feel hopeless. <laughs> and then you feel that's divine truth and that's the, you feel that's what that's caused. And so you run away from God's truth. Yes. We see mm. one of two things happening. Either people get into this state for for a, a period of time till till they end up blaming the teachings of divine truth and mm. saying it doesn't work <laughs> or even if i think it really is god's truth i just can't do it and i've just got to go back to a different life mm. i can't listen anymore mm. or we see other people going into attempting to feel these emotions as truthful emotions that need to be released from their past when in fact these emotions this sad hopeless feeling is really a, a compensatory feeling that is being created again and again mm. because of the lack of desire for truth yes and so really our second point is about growing a desire for truth because without this desire for truth about how you and really this is our our major point <laughs> without a desire for truth about the state of your heart and then a desire for truth about the state of your life <laughs> everything that jesus and mary share with you will be lost yes it will fall on deaf ears and what i notice a lot doing as a as a result of what you're raising is that they are manufacturing emotions that they prefer to feel rather than feeling the truthful emotions that are hard to feel but can be quite quickly felt. And so what they finish up doing is living in this cycle of manufactured manufactured feelings that have nothing to do with their childhood injuries whatsoever and therefore can never be released. <laughs> they only can ever be created by a person's own, like you said, living in the compensatory effect of their choice to avoid the truth and choice to avoid feeling the truth. And, and I see, you know, that is a major, it's definitely a major problem. We want to confront at the group, certainly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we see this is a, is a, a condition that is rife amongst mm. those who have been listening, especially those who've been listening to Divine Truth for some years now, some yes. five or six years. Yes. Many of them are in exactly the, the state that you, that you have just highlighted and mentioned. Yes. And, because of this, they feel they've almost become more like little babies. <laughs> they want more feeding and more hand holding because life just feels yuckier and yuckier, and yeah. they they look they to you more needy and more yes. demanding. <laughs> but also, many too, I notice become well. They, many are also becoming exhausted, yes. uh, which is the which is yes. the result of manufacturing and then feeling manufactured emotions rather than feeling the truth. Yes. Mm. Yes. And all of you who are attending the groups still underestimate the power of first acknowledging the truth emotionally to oneself, to, to allowing that process to happen. And then, as Jesus has mentioned, the power and intensity of the, the true emotion within your soul is far more readily accessible mm. and it doesn't it doesn't stay as long as these awful, horrible, other cyclical, um, pseudo-emotional states that you're finding yourselves in. Which are primarily driven by a fear of truth. Yes. A fear of coming to emotionally accept your own truth. Yes. Mm. Yes. And so really this is such, this is really the crux of what we wanted to say mm. to those attending. Many of you are focusing on you are telling yourselves that you are focusing on God's love, on prayer, on all of these things, really on humility, on, on everything but truth. Mm. And unless one deals with 
one's personal resistance to truth and begins to open their heart to truth, to receiving truth and acknowledging truth, then humility has not yet developed Mm. and the receipt of God's love is not possible. Prayer is not sincere. And that is the awakening to sin, isn't it? The it truth is, that's indeed. in us is the sin that's in us that needs to be released. And yes. and ha- without that initial awakening to it, the acknowledgement of it, the feeling of it, then nothing else can really happen. Yes. And I, I just feel too that people don't understand the importance of truth very much. There's, there's, you know, they don't understand that it's not love that sets you free, but it firstly, truth. it's the truth that sets you free. And that allows love to enter into your life. Yes. And this is, uh, and I feel that many are still trying to desperately get loved while at the same time to des- desperately avoid the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that is, is so well put. And, and we see even amongst those who are planning to attend the group, there is a feeling of, feeling within the heart of viewing of viewing divine truth, the teachings of divine truth (laughs) as something about emotions Mm -hmm. and something about getting love Mm. from God. Mm. Um, But there is a very little (laughs) emphasis on truth. Mm. From an emotional perspective, there is no value. And no desire, it it appears. Because Mm. there is no value, Mm. there is no desire Mm. for it. Mm. Yes. And so for each person to come to see the, the paramount value of truth mm. is so important. It is paramount to each person's life, even the physical life, but particularly and especially to the growth of one's soul mm. and the spiritual life. Without truth, there is not just stagnation but degradation mm. and it is really the the desire not just a willingness but a desire to find truth and embrace truth that causes any soul from anywhere from any position that they are in to progress yeah and what we observe is that many people who have been coming along for many years still have a passionate desire to hold on to the lie, (laughs) hold on to the error that's within them rather than actually accept the truth of what's really there. Yes. Mm. And I wish that I could convey (laughs) just the wonderful gift that truth is. Mm. It it is difficult to put into words through... through a medium (laughs) and without the benefit of conveying so much through feeling. Mm. But the gifts that come with truth, that come from truth, that come, truth is, it is such an essential part of who we are Mm. and how we grow. and, And it is really, and I remember being on earth, it was impossible from that perspective to understand the full impact and power and and gifts that come from receiving truth mm. and and knowing truth even though receiving it and knowing it upon the earth seems to be the most wonderful thing when one opens their heart to it mm. it is still beyond really our comprehension until we begin to progress more and more. And the more we progress, the more we see how much everything rests upon truth mm. and how much how much it is a gift that keeps giving and mm. rolls out. It has it has expanding gifts as it continues to roll, ripple mm. out from from any one person who speaks it or knows it or gives it. Mm. And and I have no doubt that as I continue to progress in this wonderful universe that God has created, that I will continue to see more and more gifts mm. that that truth brings, and that that is it is almost as if it is it is truth that is this wonderful gift that does these wonderful things. It is a substance that is unlike 
Mm. It, it is so comparable to God's love, although that is an entirely different substance that mm. is the ultimate gift that I have ever received. Yeah. <laughs> but God's truth... I f- you couldn't even receive it without God's truth. No. And, and this is why we really wish to stress and emphasise this to those of you who will be attending these assistance groups. Mm. If you can focus your hearts on feeling the truth of... Or even just changing their desire to hear it and to, to accept it. That, and engage with it. Yeah. We see many people who, who hear truth from you. But they don't really hear it. They're so angry and bitter about hearing it. That's right. Mm. It's why I signal my ear rather mm. than my heart. The, it, the words are processed intellectually, but they're, they don't hit the heart of the person. Well, they're completely closed off to wanting it even in yes. many cases. This, um, this is our point exactly. It, mm. is, it is like a big black spot in the vision mm. of most people who mm. will be in attendance. There is a sort of some we we say injured viewpoint of humility mm. and emotion mm. and a far far greater injured viewpoint uh, about god and god's nature and this is because this black spot surrounding truth there exists within their clarity of understanding mm. within their vision of what is divine truth and the teachings of divine truth and mm. how these teachings you know, we don't even call them divine truth anymore here. They mm. just are the, the laws <laughs> of the universe, the truth of how we exist and, mm. and um, mm. are so simple yet so profound and wonderful that, mm. um, yes, and the, that w- it's indescribable. Yeah. Um, and I feel most people, like you were mentioning too, don't have this understanding that one truth, just accepting one truth, leads to multitude of other truths and and you could almost say that each truth is a doorway to hundreds and hundreds of other truths and without entering that doorway and actually going through it you will never receive the other truths that are available to you absolutely mm. and yet if a person does engage their heart with the reception of just one truth mm. it it becomes far easier they are pulled towards new truth and new truth and and a process begins within themselves because they start building a faith in truth yes and in the power of it and Mm. things simplify where i we see many of the people attending have complexified (laughs) 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 i'm sure i'm not using the proper english language (laughs) but (laughs) i wish to embody an emotion with that word they have (laughs) they have made it a crazy intellectual minefield that many of us viewing them shake our heads (laughs) and we do try so sincerely to assist them yeah to to see this blind spot which is why we're so excited to have this opportunity to speak more directly today that if each person could really engage with each of you at these at these talks that you will be giving engaging their heart with the truth that Mm. you mentioned whether it is general or given straight to them if they could begin to do that they would find their understanding of divine truth if they la- allowed even a single truth to hit them emotionally, their, their global understanding of divine truth would rapidly become clearer mm-hmm. if they begin to engage with this truth and to seek it, to seek truth about themselves, to seek truth about their relationships, to seek truth about the way they're living their life, mm-hmm. to seek to feel about all of those things, to fully acknowledge emotionally what is the true state of their soul and what is the true impact of their current soul and its condition upon not just themselves but everyone around Mm. them. Many of them completely wish to deny any truth surrounding this. They live in a fantasy that they have created of their own about what is the truth about themselves, what is the truth about their intentions, what is the truth about their relationships, what is the truth about their impact upon the world around them. And because it's it's fantastical, it's not real. Mm. Because 
and they've made it almost an impenetrable barrier towards truth. There's a force field of deflection <laughs> where truth bounces off that fantasy land. This is what limits their growth so immensely. Mm. And this is what we would love. We just want to impress and encourage upon everyone attending. If they can begin to lower the force field, we know many of them are frightened of doing this. Mm. But but even that is another... A resistance many are using to truth. that as, a, and as a, another excuse to resist truth. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. in the end... It, it, like the way to deal with fear is completely different to the majority the way majority of dealing with it certainly they are not dealing with fear no they are not dealing with living in it and they've 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 created more of a story Mm, mm. (laughs) around their fear with with a bit of divine truth lingo (laughs) (laughs) if we can call it that to uh to back up their story (laughs) we laugh because it it is in some ways so crazy a thing to do it is yeah. because truth is such a wonderful thing a wonderful thing Mm -hmm. and and when one engages with even the scary truths things that they have felt are scary there comes a liberty that that many have never experienced Mm. and and a sense of connection with self that they have not experienced either and and yet feel quite uh, unhappy and dissatisfied with their life because they don't experience this connection with self. Mm, yeah. And so this we we are so looking forward to these groups and we are <laughs> we are so excited. Many many I'm representing many of the guides mm. of many of the people who who are, will be in attendance. Mm-hmm. And so many are so thrilled. Mm. And so thrilled to see um, the people that they are guiding actually even want to go (laughs) wanting to go booking in to go and and having intention to Mm. go yeah but we just really all of them really wanted to highlight this this very special area that if each person in attendance could really focus upon the engagement with truth the challenging of all of the false false ideas about truth, the challenging even of their ideas that they think they already want truth when so many of them from a, their hearts are very close to mm. it. Mm. And if, if each person, if each of you attending could, could challenge that within yourself, um, you would begin to experience much more than you have previously in terms of growth, in terms of connection with self, in terms of understanding humility and beginning to make movements towards humility and these are very very important beautiful changes that can happen within your soul Mm. but they cannot happen unless your attitude and belief and desires surrounding truth begin to change yeah (laughs) ain't that the truth (laughs) it is yeah, I, I, I um, obviously you've given us some advice too. So uh, perhaps you'd like to share what advice you've given <laughs> to us. <laughs> Certainly, I would be happy to. We spoke with you, as you know, <laughs> about the the state of complacency and apathy within within the people who will be attending. <laughs> And if you remember, we encourage you to give everyone a good shake up, mm. a good shake up around these very attitudes, these very desires to take continually from both of yourselves to, to be handheld and, and bottle fed and, mm. and um, to emphasize to people the choices that they have. Mm. And to, to really allow the confrontation between the error that they present towards yourselves and the truth that you know. Yes, we, we want to stop nursing them like that should, like they're babies, because that's what they want, many of them, but, but, but it's not very good for them. And, and also it doesn't encourage their development of their will in any way. No. So, you know, and so, if they just imagine to. if their own mother and father had never encourage them out of a nappy or uh, up from crawling (laughs) or to to learn how to feed themselves, then they would be 50-year-olds 
wearing an nappy, being spoon fed still. Lying <laughs> and crying. Yeah, crying whenever they <laughs> uh, were unhappy. Whenever they were uncomfortable. Yeah. But that is not the that is not the purpose of our life or our lives upon the earth. <laughs> or, or anywhere else. <laughs> no, but these are crucial lessons of from <laughs> from the beginning of incarnation to mm. to begin to embrace the personal will that has been gifted to us. Such a beautiful gift. Yeah. I like, I like some of Paul's words in the Bible about that, you know, about thinking as a babe and what, you know, yes. acting as a baby and people are just continuing on doing that over and over and over again yes. without growing up, you yes. know, and God really wants us to grow up and become self-responsible beings who exercise our passions and desires in harmony with love. Yes, mm. and as Paul says, then we begin to see clearly, we begin to see clearly the, the truth. Exactly. But without that, the truth is... It's never known and everything is dark. Yeah. Yes. So, so it is something that we're definitely going to focus on trying yeah. to help people have some breakthroughs. Um, unfortunately, some will feel that as, you know, us being quite <laughs> firm and severe on them. <laughs> but, uh, but the reality is anybody who does listen to the particular uh, groups that we create for the years to come, needs to needs to engage the, and needs to see the necessity of engaging their desire and passion for truth and and to stop resisting it because um, it's coming at them in, in so many different ways already without mm -hmm. Jesus or Mary actually saying it to them. Yes. <laughs> but, but when Jesus and Mary in your face saying it to you, then obviously <laughs> there's a pretty straight <laughs> truth coming at you there. But But I still see most people having this underlying viewpoint that that when I talk to another person that I'm speaking the truth, but when I talk to them, <laughs> I, I, I don't know the truth about their life, and uh, that is yes. a big problem still. It is a it it is a strange fact, isn't it, that mm. upon the earth there has been so much error propagated, mm. so much so that the conception of love has mutated so much. The, the understanding of what love is has been injured so much within mm. most people that it is now viewed as completely disparate, completely disconnected from truth. Mm. And yet to know real love is to know the, how conjoined it is with truth. Mm. And so it is with some sadness or it is, it is unfortunate that upon the earth when people stand up and speak truth, they are often regarded as being completely unloving. Mm, yeah. And, and, and it happens in all walks of life, not just uh, with regard to God's truth. It's, yes. 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 It's, it is such a, such a, <coughs> such an issue. Mm. And, and we hope that each person can begin to bring their understanding back in more alignment, but we know that that can never happen until people such as yourselves are willing to speak truthfully with love mm. Um, mm. or be loving, which is to speak truth. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and and, um, and I, I, like you say, I often see people thinking that they can be loving without being truthful. We still have many people who have listened to divine truth for years and years and years and are still living, they're living lies in their life all the time. They haven't honestly portrayed their life even to their friends let alone to to anybody mm -hmm. and they still obviously cover over a lot of their life with god mm -hmm. and and still think that that somehow they're going to receive love through that process and i still uh, struggle to understand why given the fact that we've spoken pretty plainly about those particular issues <laughs> but uh, but, but it does de demonstrate the addiction involved in what most people today define as love and so that's Obviously, one of the things we'll be addressing as well, the actual definition of love that people have and trying to confront that definition so that it's more in harmony with God's <laughs> rather than rather than the hellish viewpoint of it. <laughs> yes, and mm. it also demonstrates, as you said, it's surprising when you've said so much on this topic, but mm. it demonstrates how disconnected people are from the true condition of their heart, the yes. true condition of their soul. They can live with a dissonance between what they say they believe and what's really occurring in their life and yes. what they really value and what they really view as bad. Yes. They they say that that love and truth are, are important, are important and yet they deny and avoid both things 
almost in, continually. Almost every moment of their day-to-day life. In their day-to-day life, mm. yes. Yeah. That's going to be an issue to face. <laughs> we'll see how we go with that. <laughs> we know that you will do well. We're so excited. <laughs> Perhaps if we could um, share one final sure. uh, matter. And this is really to speak again to the hearts of those people who will be attending. Mm. There is coming a time of the necessity to make a choice, a crystallising of of what it is each of you wish to do Mm. (laughs) and how if it is that you wish to pursue a path towards God while you are on earth. Or even it, your deci- the decision you make will carry for most of you well into your spirit life as well, whatever you decide. And this is always, of course, up to you on a moment by moment basis. But what we see for many of you is that you have been in this cyclical pa- place for a long time, not receiving these teachings really with your heart, opening to understanding them mm. within, from an emotional place. And so there is a lot of dissatisfaction or a sense of stagnation or a sense of frustration in your relationship or, or a sense of, oh, I'm never getting there or it's just too hard. And what we see for many of you is that you are coming to a crucial point, a crucial point in your soul's life, really, mm. and that is, Will I choose to move from my head to my heart? Will I choose to really experiment with putting these principles in practice? Will I choose just to open up my heart to the truth of what is really in me and around me right now? Or will I choose to just avoid any discomfort, <laughs> avoid any challenge and and really relinquish my interest mm. in the teachings of divine truth and return to a life that is probably not dissimilar from most other people's life. And not dissimilar from the life they've already had. <laughs> the one that they've already had, it's a return to that life and it's, it's a similar life to the one that mm. you were raised in with your family and mm. you perpetuate for future generations. And, and we see- Unfortunately may die in. Yes, mm. and this is why we say that these types of decisions are quite critical. Once a mm. person has been exposed very directly in spoken words <laughs> to God's truth. From the um, person who taught it from the first time. From a person <laughs> who has the wealth of experience and lives it and breathes it. Mm. Um, once a person, this is different. This is a different choice now mm-hmm. that people begin to make. And if there is a decision made after hearing it, after, after being faced directly with the presentation of God's truth from the person who has discovered it and known it the longest, and if a person then chooses and Each person is allowed to choose in either direction, Mm. but we just wish to raise the awareness for each of you who will be attending these groups because it is during this this next two-year period that we see most of you are going to face this decision, really. Mm. Face it, and we hope that you face it head-on with full knowledge. That's why we want to speak to you about it. Mm. That when you face this decision, will I pursue this path of self-knowledge of, of a desire to really grow, to, to know the truth about myself and about God and the universe that I live in? Or will I choose to put that off and really go back to a different life? Once you face that choice with knowledge <laughs> of what you're really choosing, then that decision usually sticks with you for a very long time. Yes. It's, it's a decision, it's not like the decision to live in addictions that you were making before you heard God's truth. Mm. Once you hear God's truth and then you decide to go back to addiction, usually, and, and a life of avoidance and facade and 
and living in harmony with the injuries that pervade the world as it is right now. Then once you decide to go back that back to that after really being given the opportunity to to know God's truth in your heart and certainly you've been made intellectually aware of it. We know that most people who make that decision remain in that decision for many years after they pass from the earth and mm. into the spirit world mm. because it is more of an exercise of the will, mm -hmm. the free will choice to reject mm. truth. Before, many people were not as aware of well, they're what... just living in ignorance, really. They were ignorantly choosing mm. what they thought was... The best they could do. The best they could do, even what they thought was loving. Mm. But once a person has been exposed to God's truth, and, and most who are attending your groups have really had some moment of recognition. Yes. This is truth. Yes. This is truth. Some of it has hit the heart in those very early stages of hearing it. Particularly the universal truth. Yes. Less so the personal truth. Yes. But, but mm -hmm. it, is the, it is the universal the truth that applies to the personal and it mm -hmm. is only resistance mm -hmm. that prevents it being applied to the personal. Exactly. And, and so this, this exercise of the will away, this is something that will stick. Well, there, there's a lot of reasons for that too, isn't there? There's, yes. Because it is a purposeful choice yes. now to sin. Yes. And, and of course, any purposeful choice to sin bears quite severe consequences, one of which is that often we remain in that condition for a long period of time. Yeah. People do not realise, do they, that, that the little tiny choices they make on a day-to-day -day basis are adding up and adding up to, yes. to get... And, and even just... To, that there's been tens of thousands or perhaps even hundreds of thousands of people at this stage who have heard divine truth since we've been back on the planet and, and many of them are now making a purposeful choice to sin, yes. which, which, which is unfortunate for them and also going to be unfortunate for their future. Very unfortunate. Mm. It's unfortunate for their, for their soul's future. Yeah, for the and pain that they're going to experience as a result. We see them already accruing that mm. pain mm. and attempting to deny it and avoid it even more. Mm. Um, but we know and some of your guides who are here with me have experienced firsthand what it is to to perpetuate this cycle of avoidance and the and to make that kind of a decision the compensatory mm. pain that that builds up mm. some of us here um not myself personally but some others have had god's truth offered to them when they first entered the spirit world and they mm. chose to reject it mm. and lived for many years in a state of increasing pain mm. until they made that second choice to actually change. But mm. this was universally a more difficult choice. And there's also the underlying emotions to the compensatory emotions of feeling like if only you had it. Like this, yes. uh, the emotion of regret yeah. is such a large emotion under those circumstances because you realize that you could have had a hundred years without suffering or even longer a thousand many thousands of years yes. without suffering yeah. if you had taken that first choice when it was offered to you rather than just putting it off putting it off all the time yeah. or even making a completely different choice to continue sinning yes so it is such a big issue that's for sure it is mm. and so this is this is the sort of crystallizing moment we see ahead for many of you who will be coming to this group. So yeah, many we will group. not see again for a long period of time. <laughs> That's right. There yeah. are others who have the potential mm. to really take this decision to really embrace divine truth from yes. a soul perspective. And we're really excited about that. Yeah, yeah. But we do challenge and encourage each of you who are listening to not kid yourself, to not come along and decide that you have made that choice to really embrace divine truth when you are still living in this fear-based state. Because some of you are going to be tempted to do that. Yeah, I can only feel five or ten people that have made that choice at this point. So, yes, mm. yes. But even those who will attend the group, many will attend the group and, and wish to leave and decide that they have made a choice to really embrace these teachings. Mm. But when they reflect after six months or a year, they'll find that really nothing has changed mm. for them. And mm. they will know that they're still perpetuating this same state that they're in. Mm. 
before they attend the group. And we would love it if everyone who attends every group makes yeah, well, that's, this choice. That's the potential, isn't it? Like yes. that's that's the thing. Is that a lot? Like what I find, unfortunately, a lot of times is that when there's 200 or 150 people coming along to a group, 150 people could choose in, yes. <laughs> to actually make yes. to make you know the heartfelt choice to embrace truth. But and this is the most exciting thing: <laughs> the future is not written. It's no. all possible. It's yeah. all possible right now. Yeah. And so we're not sharing all of these things to scare anyone or to twist. We're sharing it because we wish to make it is the truth. Mm. <laughs> and we want to help people understand the potential. Yes. And the potential in both directions. It's important to look at both. Yes, because the potential in a negative direction is also possible in the positive. Like it, exactly. It, you, you, and just you make one small decision and... And and if it's made out of harm and love, the potential for that decision to have a terrible effect on you the rest of your life yes. is great. But also, if you make the one small decision in a positive direction, the potential in in the positive direction is also great. So that's right. So and, and a lot of times, isn't it the case where we hit the decision point, and that becomes unfortunately a turning point mm -hmm. rather than. Um, you know, so in other words, a turning back ba point. A turning back point. <laughs> yes. Uh, rather than rather than a, a, a going, okay, a stepping forward. Yeah. Well, even understanding that it's a critical moment. Yes. My decision now, the decision I make this week, yes. the decision I make this day, yes. or in this moment, is going to be a critical moment in my history, mm -hmm. in my life, mm -hmm. and and understanding the importance that every decision that we face in harmony with love or out of harmony with love almost becomes like that. Yes. And, and, and that's, I feel, where most people are skipping over their decisions and, and the consequences of their decisions. And this is what we refer to as the complacency yes. that, we, that we see. There is a feeling that the opportunities are endless, that they can just make the different decision <clears throat> tomorrow. They can, oh, they really probably should have spoken up there, but they didn't. Or really, oh, I can see that was a great attraction to feel something, but they but didn't. didn't. <laughs> and they feel that it will go on and on and on. Mm. And while God's love is an incredibly abundant gift and mm. there are a, an abundance of opportunities, the person who is most harmed through the complacency about each of these wonderful opportunities um, being provided and then really not valued and turned away and feeling like, oh, mm -hmm. there'll be another one to come. The people who are most harmed are the people who are turning away those opportunities, mm -hmm. which is not to say that it's not harming a great many other people. Others, yes. yes. Yeah, the sin against the Holy Spirit harms not only yourself but many others yes. as a result many, of the choice. Many, many others. Yeah. And, um, yes, we see that there is a great complacency and a feeling that, well, yourself and Mary will also be a ready resource mm. forever. And I, I don't think most people have even practically considered that. Obviously, the more we progress and the more people who understand or know divine truth, the less time we're going to have to spend to it with each one individually. And, and it just makes logical sense that that's the case. So, and then, and then bearing in mind there, there are bigger issues mm. also at stake. And besides helping people here on earth, there's many, many spirits that also need assistance. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a sharing of our time amongst these particular matters that are that are of universal importance, and so our priority system has to be, <laughs> as, as we said in our you know in our Jesus and Mary dealings FAQ series recently, yes. our priority systems have to be refined, and that's going to be mean that the majority of people who think they can expect to have personal contact, it's not going to be available, basically because it's not going to be possible. And also there is a very key issue, which is when gifts are not valued, exactly. then there, it is not a punitive... Or, More gifts can't be added though. Mm. Yes, it, it, is a, it is part of the laws really mm. of love mm. that govern this. And many people feel that if, because of certain experiences in their childhood, if, if they didn't value a gift, then they were punished. This is not about punishment, but it is a natural sort of working that if mm. 
a loving law, really, <laughs> that if the gift is offered and offered and offered and never received or viewed even as a gift, then it is natural that that gift will be withdrawn for a time. Of course. And, and I, feel, I feel that is a big problem. It's not just the fact in childhood that people had been not offered gifts or whatever, but, it, but a, a lot of and people... And the converse, on, yes. Yeah, the reverse yes. is often the case, unfortunately, <laughs> yes. in that people have been given gift after gift after gift after gift. I've never discerned any appreciation for it. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they've been taught that you're going to keep getting gifts and keep getting gifts and lovers will keep you keep giving your gifts even though you don't appreciate them. And that's not the case at all. And even God would, will not do that. And I think most people don't understand that particular thing, that even God will not do that. And in fact, it is, it is not about the lack or abundance of the gift. No. It, is, it is in response to, to a condition the, within the heart. The again. gratitude for the gift. The gratitude, mm. the acknowledgement, the, what I called in the beginning the value placed upon that gift. Yes. Then it is, love would only naturally respond to the condition within the soul of the per people mm. being offered the gift. For those who are Christians, I said the words, um, don't cast your pearls before swine, <laughs> which was basically a principle based on this particular uh, underlying principle of love. Indeed. In that people who do not appreciate the gifts should not, cannot be given more until they learn to appreciate the gifts they've already been given. Mm. It is not a good economy. And as you know, everything in God's universe <laughs> is, is, economy. is very economical mm. in a loving way, not in a stingy way. <laughs> mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's very good. Okay. Um, I feel, is, is there anything more that as a group you'd like to say to the group? We, obviously, we want to try to give some more opportunities to say some more things. We're still not certain how we're going to do that. Um, in that full schedule. Yes, in the very busy schedule we have. We, as you know, the, the, the schedules that we've created are quite uh, busy and, and most of the presentations are quite key presentations. And this is why we've made the rule that people can't come and go as they please yes. because every single presentation in one group is joined to the next presentation. And so, uh, yeah, we're still undetermined about how we can <laughs> sort of ha have you guys share more information as well during the groups, which we're hoping to create opportunities to do. We feel there will be certain times where it... Where it naturally arises. It yeah. naturally arises. Yeah. And we're looking forward to that opportunity also. Yeah. There are a number of guides who wish to step forward and, and be vocal and... To, and also your own personal guides wish to be quite mm. involved, as mm. you know, they often are. Mm. And really to finish, we, we would really just wish to encourage each person who will be attending to, to recognise the choice that they have, uh, that they face mm. uh, uh, right now at this time in their life, to either really begin to embrace truth from an emotional perspective, or to live a life in denial of it mm. for quite some time to come. Mm. And as I mentioned, it is up to each person and we are whichever choice that they make. And our only desire is to, to really make people more aware of the will-based choice that they face. Yes. To, to know your will is so important, yep. to know what you are choosing and to, to, to make you aware of that we feel is a gift. Yes. I feel we need to probably say at this point that those are people who are going to listen to the group program, whether they are actually in attendance or, or whether they're listening through some kind of remote method. <laughs> um, the, they've already made the choice to actually listen. Yes. And so they've, and in the case of those who come, well, you've already put aside a week of your time or just over a week of your time to come. So it would make sense to make the next step and actually make a choice. <laughs> your body will be there. <laughs> your what body about will be your there. heart? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> your body's there, but are you going to be? <laughs> and really, we see that people can approach this experience just as they've approached hundreds of other seminar experiences with yourselves mm. to come and to be interested sometimes entertained sometimes fascinated sometimes a little thoughtful 
And sometimes a little angry. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes a little emotionally challenged. <laughs> um, so people can come with that same <clears throat> attitude and mm. they will receive about the same level of benefit they already have. Which is next to nothing. Mm. And they'll remain in this very sort of stagnant, cyclical, feeling hopeless, faithless sort of a state that's yeah. not real. It's all a product of avoiding truth and not embracing it. Yes, and or, I feel they need, need to make the decision to stop blaming God for yes. their lack of or their lack of desire to receive truth and stop blaming the teachers for their lack of desire for receiving truth and start looking more internally to yes. see what, what's going on inside of yourself that causes you to reject the truth. Yes. Yeah. We see so many feel that theirs is a special case. Yes. <laughs> that it's easier well, for everyone easy. else. <laughs> everyone else but them. If yes. only everyone else could understand how it was for them. Yes. When each, each individual has the same choices mm. to, to see truth, to want truth, to want to grow in love yeah. and... And so each person has their special set of circumstances. So people have this opportunity to, to engage as they always have. Yeah. Or they have the other opportunity. And again, many do not realise the power of, of coming with a, with a sincere feeling for truth, mm. a sincere feeling to engage with truth, a sincere feeling to seek truth truth not just receive it because jesus and mary are still saying it but to seek it from a heart perspective to seek to know the truth and to seek to really listen to what they're saying mm. it's difficult for us to describe in words through a medium the power that that would have for each individual in attendance but then also what kind of atmosphere that creates in the room that enables us to be present so much more yes that enables us to encourage each of you so much more, to inspire each of you so much more, to protect each of you so much more from negative influences. Mm -hmm. this, this seeking within the heart, this seeking feeling, this it's so underestimated and yet it is so, so powerful. Yes. And, and I think it's worth mentioning, isn't it, that many of the seminars of the past We've had hundreds of thousands or even millions of quite dark spirits influencing yes. the proceedings and influencing the people there when the reality is they can only influence the people because of the people not wanting to get out of their own complacency to receiving truth. Yes. If they had a passion for receiving truth, those spirits would not even bother with that location so much, aside from seeing it as a bit brighter than mm. <laughs> the environs. Um, mm. They wouldn't bother in the sense that they could not get any kickback for being there mm -hmm. and therefore would help you guys a lot to be able to help. Immensely, um, immeasurably. Yes. yes. So, so I feel a lot's going to depend upon the audience, but as far as it, it depends on us, we're going to make sure that any of the audience who don't come with that attitude don't remain there very long <laughs> because uh, because we're not going to spend a lot of time trying to encourage you to have that attitude. We're going to want to spend our time with people who actually have the desire for truth. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is only logical mm. for so many reasons, such that I just mentioned about the the seeking heart is really the heart that receives. Mm. And so you would no longer be casting your pearls before swine. Mm. But also in that there is a power to, to move through topics and lessons much more rapidly and expand on them more deeply yes. when yes. There, there is a group of people with a concentrated desire for yes. truth. Yeah, there's, there's obviously a lot of material we'd like to share with people, but we have yet to be able to be because of this bogged down resistance that keeps on happening at most of the seminars we present. And that's something we definitely want to avoid while we're doing our <laughs> <laughs> assistance groups. <laughs> and from our perspective, what we see is that things can go routinely mm. and that each <clears throat> that you yourselves can only respond <laughs> um, to... To the, the heart to of the condition the, of the time <laughs> that, that is there. Mm. But if we speak again to those who will be in attendance, if each of you can come with a, a desire to challenge yourselves surrounding truth, then 
this is where the possibilities are endless. Yes. This is where you go off the map into uncharted, wonderful new territory. And all of the proceedings feel less tiring. They're more inspiring. Yeah. They're more life-changing. But if that is not a condition within the hearts of those present, then there is an immediate limitation placed upon the mm. potentials for that group. Yeah, we've received so many emails already where people say, you know, oh, I've booked in to see the, to go to the group, but I'm pretty afraid of coming, you know, and that already is the wrong attitude, really. Yes. You, you, why aren't you excited to come <laughs> rather than afraid of coming? <laughs> afraid of coming is already indicating <laughs> that There's there is the same desire. lack of desire. Yes. And, and in fact, the fear itself, by honouring it, you're honouring you're honouring yourself staying in that complacent, fear-based state. Indeed. So, so we'd really love to see a group of 70 people come who are passionate about what they're going to receive and passionate about being open and passionate about observing some of their personal truths that they need to come yes. face to face with and yes. have an awakening to some of their sins that they've been very resistive for years and years mm -hmm. to awaken towards. And, uh, yeah, so we're very hopeful that we can create that kind of atmosphere. Certainly. And mm. this is why we're so excited about this opportunity that presented itself today to mm. address those people in attendance. Mm. Because we would like to point out that this opportunity to give this message gives us an opportunity to bring awareness, new awareness, to those of you who listen. But... Just because you have awareness doesn't mean movement on these issues. And this is where you have the opportunity now to begin to move from a simple awareness to actual change before you even arrive at mm. these groups. And then at the groups, Jesus and Mary will be presenting you with new information to give you new awareness. Mm. And But that will only be meaningful if you decide to open your heart towards it, to allow it to affect your heart and to create changes in your life. Mm. So while this is a wonderful opportunity and we are so excited to have this opportunity to bring awareness before you even enter the door at the groups, the changes can only occur if you engage your heart with these things, mm. just as it will be at the groups. Mm. Oh, well, so that... We're happy to have had that opportunity. We thank you so very much for giving us this voice. Mm -hmm. and um, this well, it's Mary giving you the voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, this opportunity and this conversation. And yeah, we, yeah. we know that in part you're here to um, assist Mary to, to feel more confident in sharing my message. And, mm. and um, there has been some limitations out of fear of, of of her fear but in the large part she's done a great job so <laughs> no that's good Sonia so um, we look forward to seeing you at the group then <laughs> yes I will be there <laughs> and is, do you have a particular charge at, uh, who, who, not at uh, this time not at this no so there's a free but... guide there going around <laughs> <laughs> indeed and some people in attendance are, are still largely relying on uh other spirits. Yes. A, a lot of them, I wouldn't say, are even guided very well at all by any spirit. They're more influenced by <laughs> by spirits in addictions and, and unfortunate conditions. Yes. But uh, obviously, we still we can just make a choice for that to change too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, I will be there absolutely <laughs> uh, <laughs> as a presence. And, and part of my passion is really to assist groups mm. in fact mm. to assist groups of people rather than having a specific person i'm guiding at yes. this time yeah. my big desire is to assist groups of people in in any way that i can and so and perhaps we need to explain that most celestial spirits assist groups rather than individuals <laughs> 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 yes, although there are some who, well, we're good multitaskers, yes, as you that's know. Right. So <laughs> we pay particular interest to certain people who have a strong uh, resonant seeking yes. with us yeah. and desire. Mm. Um, but in truth, it is difficult to guide a lot of people on earth yes. being a celestial guide because there is very little 
resonance, if I can use that word, or very little um, sort of real connection on real the main points yeah. um, for God mm. within them, and mm. so. I know that will burst many people's bubble, mm -hmm. but it is the truth. Yes, and, and, uh, and, uh, and perhaps it needs to be stated that many people who come to our groups do not have celestial guides or even divine love guides no. at this point. There mm. are times when groups of us are able to influence them, influence them mm. but this is different from having a close relationship with a guide well, yeah. and to being open to that guidance. Um, many are so self-reliant, <laughs> so self-reliant, mm. that they do not even wish to really receive assistance. I feel too that there's many who come to our groups and are not only self-reliant, but they're reliant on, on abusive and, and quite yes. dark spirits yes. to, to engage their life. Yes. And that, that is a major problem still. Yes, and we must respect that will within them. Mm. We cannot do any... If there are moments when they are more open, mm. then we can come and provide some encouragement, some inspiration, some some truth. <laughs> but it's very shaky to get the truth mm. uh, in there. But mm. that will create some opportunities for them to make different choices. Yeah. But for the main part, we watch, sadly, at quite a distance mm. attempting to to have a loving influence yes. over what these other <laughs> interactions Things that are, are occurring on. yes mm. and recently you spoke with someone who has influence on a great many people on the earth mm. um, uh, but we observe many people like Anthony who are in mainly involved with people upon the earth yes Yes. Yes. Yes, and uh, obviously, you know, one thing that would help them is for the people on Earth to get out of these facade-based <laughs> fantasy addictions <laughs> that yes. they're in, and burst uh, the bubble, and burst the bubble, and want truth. And when you desperately desire truth, it's very hard then to attract spirits who are like that. Actually, very yes. difficult to attract them. They don't mm. feel attracted. In no, fact, they, they feel don't. repelled. They from feel the repelled, person. and they feel. They're not going to get what they want from the person and they know they're not going to get what they want from the person so they completely leave you alone aside from occasionally attacking you <laughs> when they feel there's an opportunity. An opening, <laughs> yes. It is so true. Yeah. But we have such great love for everyone mm. who, um, well, for everyone on the earth. Yeah. And um, really we want to express our love to those who will be attending the groups because... <laughs> We do just, we love them, we have such great compassion for them and we see such great opportunities for them mm -hmm. and we're doing everything we can to assist them to feel the truth mm -hmm. about God and the, the beauty of the way. But we cannot do that when their hearts are so close to truth. Mm -hmm. We're so limited. Yeah, and the fact that our groups are not yet full yet <laughs> is an indication probably that yeah. there's still quite a lot of people who don't fully appreciate um, yeah. what, it, what it means to actually receive truth in a direct manner. Yeah. Mm. But there is that opportunity <laughs> still there. <laughs> yeah. and, and we would encourage those coming to question, do I want more of the same mm. or do I want a radically changed life in a year's time? Mm. <coughs> one that has more fulfillment, more connection with myself and others, and one that is commencing this true relationship with God. So we'll leave you there. I think it's a good place to leave it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love you guys so much, mm. and, and we thank Lena and Igor who are working, we know as well, to bring this recording to everyone. Mm -hmm. We are very, very grateful again for this opportunity to bring a message to others. Yes, and our little small team is quite busy, so. <laughs> yes, very busy. And all of that preparation that I mentioned that you yourself, yes, you did. Um, while Lena and Igor have been less um, perhaps less involved for such a long time and so in so many different spheres that you've been working on for these particular groups. Mm -hmm. They have been very actively busy mm. working with you and on various uh, technical considerations and configurations and mm. <laughs> new setups. And also getting the material out to the world after the groups too, which is going to be quite an endeavour. 
It'd be a because great it, service yes. to others. Yes. Because there's, there's 64 hours of material that we'll be generating. Each and time. Each time. And uh, that all needs to be gotten out in a very short period of time so that people coming to the next group <laughs> can at least understand the next group. <laughs> so oh, we are so <laughs> excited. Yeah, so much joy amongst us yeah. to, to have truth shared so directly and in person upon the earth. As you know, it has been so long mm. <laughs> since that has actually been possible yes. yeah. <laughs> to have a person on earth express so much truth about God yeah. and for us not to have to rely on mediumship or inspiring, but just to really have the truth of God so readily available, so clearly explained. Mm. It brings us all so much, mm. <laughs> so much joy and satisfaction. Mm. So we thank you, brother. It's our pleasure and thank you for coming and talking to us. And uh, we'll give you the opportunity to come and talk again when we, when we notice those opportunities <laughs> appear. <laughs> we'll help you notice. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
opposite of fear, isn't it? And then my fears come up a lot. But yeah, well, if, if, if the definition of fear is the false expectations appearing real, <laughs> yeah. then obviously what is real it's is going true. to confront what yeah. appears real. Yeah. And, uh, and obviously fear is just what appears real to people at this stage. Yeah. And while they live in that state, then they're not honouring truth in its power to de deconstruct that state of fear. Yeah. So, you know, it's one thing to have a feeling of fear within you, quite another to honour it yeah. as a, a, and live by it, as yeah. most are doing. Yeah. So yeah. It's funny when I live in that state, it makes me feel like, you know, I'm in a tunnel that just closes off at the end, mm. living in fear. It's like I'm just going dark, 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 and it's all just Well, that's the dark. direction it's going. It's going into the hells when you live in fear. Yeah. So whereas that, it is a tunnel that's closing <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally what it is. That's what it feels like. And yeah. when I'm in a state of seeking truth, it's almost like, well, I'm in a tunnel, but there's the possibility but there's light of at the light end of the tunnel. Yeah. at the end. And in fact, it's a tunnel that's expanding. And the more I go there, I go, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. Oh, Correct. it's not as bad as I thought. Oh. And then sometimes I freak out in the corner of the tunnel and just yeah. cry for a while because I'm afraid. But, you know. If a lot of the people who are living in fear could imagine themselves crawling through a, a, a deep underground cavern where they've just got enough space to squeeze yeah. through, uh, which is, like. and, then, and then only to find that the next space is tighter again. Yeah. And that'll give them a bit of a concept of what they're doing with their lives. And if, if the people who really want truth, if they can say, well, I'm crawling through this really tight space at the moment, but the reality is the next cavern is gonna be larger and larger and larger yeah. until you get to an oasis, you know? Yeah. And so it's a completely different way of seeing the future. Yeah. Unfortunately, most people, are seeing truth like it, like it's a cavern that's closing off, yeah. rather than rather than one that's uh, expanding. Yeah, and I just feel like that's an unfortunate thing. But but as she also pointed out, and I think it's really important to emphasise that many are <coughs> are making decisions that are resulting in the fact that they may never respond to divine truth for many hundreds and sometimes thousands of years because yeah. of the decisions they're now making. Yeah. And, and, and also there is the potential that they make that decision and divine and God's truth isn't, and divine, God's love isn't offered to them mm -hmm. for a long period of time after they've chosen to not receive it. Mm -hmm. So there's many people who have this belief, just like many children nowadays have the belief mm -hmm. that they should keep on getting gift after gift after gift without appreciating them. Yeah. And that's not the way God works at all. So, so yeah, and, and it's not a threat. It's just a statement of fact. It's just what it is. And it's, isn't it's the it, quality of love and truth. Yeah. It's part of the quality. You can't keep giving something to somebody who doesn't appreciate its, its and cannot receive it. Yeah. In fact, to do so would be forcing it upon them and that can't be done. Yeah. Mm. And it's interesting <coughs> when people have their responses to that, even if they just view it as a concept that God's <coughs> love might be withdrawn at some point. I remember when we first discussed it years and years and years ago and I was coming at that truth from a lot of error. Mm -hmm. I felt like, what? <laughs> you know, that's not fair. When really the feeling inside of me was, people should have to put up with my crap. You know, really that's the feeling that drives that. It's a feeling that yeah. I should be able to get stuff Without even though I even though I don't want it really, I'm not exercising a desire. <laughs> I should have for the it. opportunity of it, even though I'm rejecting it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a feeling about love that was very incorrect. Yeah, and if we if we liken it to again like children receiving gifts, it's like a child getting a gift, jumping up and down on it, and squashing it into smithereens, and then saying, "Where's my next one?" Mm -hmm. And the parent going, "Oh, I'm going to give you the next one." Like any parent in their right mind would go, <laughs> "Hang on a sec, you just <laughs> destroyed the last one. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to give." you the next one and, and then if you've given five or ten in a row like that and, yeah. and the child's jumped up and down on every one of them so yeah. it's not what I want it's not what I want yeah. um, and unfortunately I feel too today a lot of people you know they receive truth and then they keep saying to the, that it's not what they want and it's true that's not what they that's want that's not what they want what yeah. they really want is what she said like handheld spoon fed yeah. uh, someone who takes responsibility for your life instead of yeah. you taking responsibility for your own and there's a lot of things we 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 really want, mm. which our lives demonstrate we really want, mm. and a lot of that is nothing to do with love or truth, unfortunately. Mm. So, so yeah, I feel there's great opportunity that we that you know coming along to the group going to have, and like we also said, um, it's it's highly unlikely we'll be doing another series like it, 
mm-hmm. um, given the fact that in three years' time we hope to be very different people and uh, yeah. and doing very different things. <laughs> yeah, mm. exactly. It's a it's a great opportunity. Time limited, also. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and that's again the natural state too. You can't expect. Um, people that have like uh, much wider goals than what most people today appreciate we have much wider mm. goals than what most people who are listening to us appreciate and uh, and obviously once we start meeting those goals then the opportunities of the past won't won't be available mm. there'll be other opportunities obviously available but um and it's natural for a growing person to in any sphere of their life to not want to repeat the same things over and correct, over again correct. Like, yeah you, you want to continue to challenge yourself personally if you yes. want to continue to grow. And so, so if those, we just... So those people with the groups who think that we're going to run another one in another series in three years' time, that's uh, highly unlikely, I would suggest. Yeah. yeah. So highly. this is your opportunity to have some one-on-one time. It's yeah. probably not going to... Yeah. It's probably going to be one of the last opportunities you're going to have, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> we um, can see Because the... we'll be sharing with larger, yeah. larger groups of people. And it's impossible to then yeah. give the individual attention that a smaller group of 70 or so can, can yeah. have. Yeah. And also I see the, the necessity for myself personally to, to really focus on, on my own relationship with God. Mm. Uh, you know, it's really becoming really important to me. And, mm. and while I really want to share divine truth with other people, that's limited to my own relationship with God as well. Yeah, and so it's essential we keep on progressing yeah. and yeah. Uh, and keep on making the steps we're tr- trying to make now. And that requires time and energy given to that process rather than having all of our time spent sharing it with everyone else. Yeah, because that yeah. takes, and I think Sonia alluded to that as well, like <laughs> how much energy goes into even just that creative process yes. before the sharing even begins. Yeah, well, you know, we started this process now preparing for these groups nearly three months ago. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've not yet had one day of rest f- since we made the decision. <laughs> and we're hoping to have a day of rest or two before, before the group then. begins. But uh, it's been a very, very busy time. Yeah. technically and also with regard to the material and so forth. Mm. And uh, and obviously, you know, we can't do that and continue our own progression. So we need we need to have times where we have a, have time for our own progression as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.